Hello drone racers, this is the LDARC slash King Kong ET-125. I just finished reviewing this quadcopter and in that process I went through setting up a receiver. So I'm actually going to split this into two videos because the setup process took a little while. In this video I'm going to go through and set up and install the receiver because this is a plug and play model. It came without a receiver but there's a wire hanging out the top and it is not made to connect to a free sky. So that's what I do. In this video I'm going to go through installing a free sky receiver in here, getting beta flight set up, not perfect but acceptably. If you don't care about that you just want to see a review of how it flies there's a link up here there's one in the description that you can use to go see the full flight review because that's pretty long also it was gonna to be too long for one video so if you just need setup here you go watch this one if you're not sure if you should get this go watch the review of this one or the ET100 or the ET115 because all three of them are pretty awesome. So we're gonna take the top off of this and see what this is connected to and what we have to do in order to get this going. So I've gotten this open to check this and what it looks like to me is that it is wired to connect to a DSM receiver. It's three volts wired, R3 and ground. So it's a DSM. I don't know how that's gonna affect inversion, if that's gonna be a problem, if I connect an XM to this, which is what my plan is or if I'm gonna to need to move it, I'll definitely need to move the five volts, but do I need to move it to R3 over down here? Probably. So what I'm actually gonna do though is I'm gonna cheat. I have the ET100 that actually came with an XM, so I'm gonna open this up and see exactly how they have it wired inside. Okay, so this one has an XM on it, and you can see it's actually wired to these bottom three pins. I don't have any DSM2 receivers, so what I'm gonna do is just unsolder on this one, which is the same board, it's exactly the same. I'm just gonna unsolder these three and just move them to the bottom so I can use them with my XM. So if you get one of these as a plug and play and you're gonna add your own, make sure you check this. I'm also gonna double check because there's a spot right here that says PPM or S bus, and I don't know exactly what that's supposed to look like, except I'll look at this one. The S bus or PPM, I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be, how that's supposed to be wired, and I'm not finding a really good manual for this, so I'm just gonna leave that and move these wires and try it and see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? I got that cable off. It was really easy just to heat up and unsolder, and then I realized there's no reason for me to put that back on. I actually have an XM and it has three wires on it ready to go. So if you have an XM, you just need three wires and these are servo leads that I cut off and these are already just tin this side and they will solder right onto those pads. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll see how it goes and maybe I will try and show it on camera a little bit if I'm ambitious. And if it works, I will show it. And if it looks bad, I won't. This is what I do. This is why I don't live stream all of everything I do, because it makes it a lot easier to not look like an idiot. Okay, I'm going to start by adding some more solder to these pads. There is solder on them, but not very much. It'll be easier to work with with a little bit more. To do that, I just put a little solder on my iron, really just hold it down there, let heat those two will mold together, and some of it will stay down there. There we go. That'll make it a little easier to work with. And then I've got a little bit of extra on here also, which will let me get the whole thing melted easier. And then I can just put it in place, hold it down. That's much better. Second one is five volts. Now if this doesn't work, normally I will have my face right down there so I can see because I don't have great eyesight. But in this case, trying to make it so you can see in case this will help somebody because this is a little bit weird. That's kind of what I try and do on the channels, make it so if you don't know what you're doing, which there's nothing wrong with that, we all started somewhere, try and show the very basics, hence the name of the channel. There we go, I think that looks good. There, now I have an XM with ground, 5 volts, and R3 all connected, and I will be able to then program those and set that up in Betaflight, ideally. Okay, I've got my radio set up and ready to bind. 
So what I'm going to do is I've got to press down this little bitty button and I'm going to point this out because I know a couple people have not been able to find this button. Here, I'll show you because it's tiny. It is super duper tiny. There's a button right there, right there in the middle that you've got to press while you plug in the battery. And it's really easy to miss and not know that it's there at all. But that's what you've got to do. And oh, actually, huh, I just recognized. I didn't notice this is an XM Plus. It just has, is missing a transmitter. So I'm gonna have to fix that probably before I fly it. But I've already got it soldered in. So I will go ahead and keep it there. I'll hit bind. Red light is flashing. Cancel bind. Unplug. Replug and should have solid green light. It's not there. It is solid green light. Good. I haven't done all the programming on the radio, but I just want to look in beta flight to make sure it looks right now. So if I just go in and go to the receiver tab, I find it is working, but totally jacked up. What we need to do is check the UARTs. We are on UART three, and under configuration. We'll check and we probably need to change the serial receiver to SBUS, save and reboot. It was very angry with us. Oh, there we go, that's much better. Yay, it works properly. Now I'll set up the rest of the channels, but we know now soldering that uh, works properly. I replaced the antenna on this side since one was missing and it's a little bit longer. We'll see how that affects everything, but I think it'll be okay. So now we're going to take a quick look in beta flight and I think we'll almost be ready to go. So we are on UART 3, which I didn't change that. That came from the factory that way. This is multi-shot. I haven't tested it with D-shot yet. I still have that to do, so I'm going to have to try that out. 4K, 4K, that's fine. I am going to change arming to 180 because I just prefer it that way. I did change this to SBUS, it was on Spectrum. I'm gonna lower the VBAT so it doesn't yell at me quite so early. The one thing I'm not sure of is if I'm gonna enable air mode here, I might come back to that. I wanna take a look at the modes configuration first. So now under modes, I want arm on aux one, angle on horizon on aux two, those are both really good. And I don't have an option here for air mode. So I am gonna enable that globally. Normally I would prefer to have that on a mode but with this installed version, which we'll find out what that is in just a minute, it doesn't seem to be available. So I want air mode on while I'm flying. It just flies better that way. So then under the CLI, this is probably gonna be the same as all the others. It's 316, which is pretty old at this point. Normally I would update everything to 322, except King Kong slash LSARC does a really good job getting everything tuned. So I'm just gonna go with their default tune. I may update it later in a future video, but for now I'm just gonna leave it on that. Most drones this size come untuned completely, so I go to 3-2 so I don't have to. I just enable dynamic filters and it's magic and it fixes everything. King Kong though does a really good job configuring it, so I usually don't find that I have to go through that process, and I'm gonna try it on this one. So to set up the radio, I have an ET-125 model that I use for this. Go into menu and then page, and then I name it here, I've already named it. I have this set with my XM to D16 and channels one through eight. That gives you the least latency, and then here's the bind when it gets to it, and then we need to go through to inputs, go down to five and just click, go down to source and click so it's flashing and then you don't have to arrow through and find the one you want. I never know what it is. You just flip the switch you want. So this is gonna be my aux one, which I use for arming. I use this switch. Some people use this switch, but I'm gonna use this one. So you can see what happens here when I switch it, it automatically selects that. So then I exit, go down to six, do the same thing. I choose this stick. This is what I use for my modes. And then I do seven, which I actually didn't set up earlier this is my buzzer so I use that for my buzzer which is important you should set up the buzzer if the model has one so then you go through to the mixer and you have to do this you just click and exit go through click and exit go through click and exit and you're done that's really all there is to it and then you're all set up to work with at least the configuration that I used in the video so again this will get your King Kong set up with your free sky receiver if you just want to see the review click on that link and if you found this useful leave a like and a comment down below let me know if you want to see this with a different receiver sorry I don't have any so until next time remember it gets a little easier every time you do it